Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for opening up your calendar, for navigating through the networks of the internet and just pushing away everything to be here. We appreciate profoundly that we are here. It's not a small thing, really. It is always an honor and I never take it for granted. And today we have a phenomenal conversation with an incredible individual. But I do have a question for you guys to get us started. Cheryl, you want to know the question? Oh, I think you're on mute, Cheryl. Of course, I want to hear the question. <laughs> and uh, this is a, this is a, uh, well, let me ask Ricardo the question. Ricardo, do you know why, you know why are crabs so bad at sharing? Because they're all shellfish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. okay. That's, good. <laughs> That's going front and center in my next speech, Joe. That's it. <laughs> so shellfish of you. So shell they're so shellfish. That's why they're bad at sharing. I, I feel like I went back to fifth grade right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're not reminded of your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I know they're terrible, but that, that's 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 why they're so great. That's why they're so great. <laughs> Good morning, Andre. Good morning, Molly. Ronald. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> so let's get us prime for Ricardo for Sorel. Great to be with you. Michael, good morning. How are you, sir? I am as I say that I am, and I am happy. Happy, yeah. awesome. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Jacqueline, good morning, where are you? Good morning, Gio, good morning. I am right where I'm supposed to be, right here on the Daily Huddle. Good morning. That is awesome. And Andre, two questions for you, Andre. What time is it and one thing you're grateful for? It's, the time is right now, and I'm grateful to be in the game. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Andre. The time is now, and we are grateful to be in the game. Sorrel, America's executive coach, America's leadership coach. Thank you for being here, Sorrel, and creating this space where a quarter of a million people have had a chance to hear the Daily Huddle. Your leadership has a domino effect, Sorrel. Thank you for creating this and thank you for being here. Good morning, Sorrel. Thank you, Giovanni. You are the number one transformational leadership coach, my partner in, in creating this. And I want the world to know that uh, this thing called the Daily Huddle is nothing without the listeners, without you. So 226 episodes and it's all because of you. So thank you this morning, like no other morning, we have a phenomenal conversation. And that conversation is coming to us directly from the island of Hispaniola, the Dominican yes. Republic. And Giovanni, I cannot wait for you to introduce our speaker, Mr. Ricardo Gonzalez. Yes, thank you, Sora. We have a phenomenal conversation. Last time he was here, we were elevated in an opportunity to interact with leadership and culture in a particular way that only Ricardo knows how to deliver. So I'm going to say just a few things. And as I always like to say, it does not give justice to his life, but I'm just going to just pin a few, point to a few things. Ricardo is the founder and CEO of Bilingual America. He's an author public speaker and trusted advisor to executive leaders. He's the author of the six stages of cultural mastery and the six stages of cultural sales, the cultural transformation manifesto, the 12 hidden truths to learning Spanish and the developer of the multiple cultural communication courses. Ricardo, thank you for being here. This is awesome. Uh, and today's question is, today's question for the context of today's conversation is, how can I attract and retain more diverse clients? Good morning, Ricardo. 
First of all, I, I have to say the, the wisdom of your three guests who, who just, I am, I am who I say I am, I am where I am. And, and, and the last gentleman, I, I'm, I was, I'm trying to remember now what it was, was the like, has now. Yeah, it, it, yes, exactly. It, it's just like the, the philosophical wisdom there was, was pretty outstanding. The answer to your question is through a process. Yes. And to go a little bit deeper, Giovanni, people are not that culturally intuitive. <laughs> and so there's a skill set that's necessary to be able to attract and retain diverse clients. So the answer is a process. Not because if you don't if you don't have a process, all you have is a bunch of disjointed and disassociated thoughts and ideas that never work together. They never come together in concert. And so you're like this person who's trying to put together a 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle using pieces from multiple boxes that are not designed to fit together. So I'm, you have to have process, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and so, in the context of creating today's conversation, and you have, uh, we have until right around nine twenty, and then we open it up for questions and answers. Sure. How do you see, how do you see um, the opportunity of such a? It's like we are embracing an opportunity to being a diverse culture, yet embracing it has created such a divisive culture. So, so, and then companies. In, they're being pulled to, or people who run companies, they're being pulled to, well, I got to do something to either have PR or really actually have diverse cultures. But the conversations is so divisive anyway that everyone is kind of walking on eggshells trying to do the right thing. I like you, but I'm afraid of you. How do you, in your experience, right? How do you, how do you look at all that in the context of, of today's question or, or how you want, or however you want to direct that? The opportunity? Yeah. So, I mean, America is a diverse country. It, it's not that we, it, it's just a fact. It's a diverse country. Right. But so is India. So is the UK. So are many, many places in the world. America is not unique. It's just, we tend to think we are. <laughs> okay. But, India, for example, is incredibly diverse, right? And so it's not that we have to embrace diversity. We're already there. We have it. I, I prefer to look at it as how do we manage it? How do we leverage it? How do we get the most out of it? So instead of thinking in terms of the negative of, oh, we have all this divisiveness and we have all this disagreement, rather, how do we leverage these relationships? And, and so I, I tend to look at how do we get to, you know, in six stages of cultural mastery, I wrote that stage six is cultural endearment. How do we get to where we're actually endeared to one another? Because only then will we actually collaborate together. Okay. And so in stage six of cultural sales, how do we get to where we celebrate together? Okay. So I always tell people, we don't, you know, we don't fall in love. We grow into it. And we don't just automatically go, well, I'm going to embrace diversity. Well, what does that even mean? For most people, it, it doesn't mean much because it's not understood. Okay. So, and then we have in, in America, all the diversity conversation is mostly around race and ethnicity, but diversity is so much deeper than that, right? It can be, it can be age. It can be someone from Birmingham and someone from Boston, you know, um, both being the same color. We've made diversity about color of skin. And I think that's a huge mistake. We need to make it about culture. Okay. So I, I want to lean into your question because you had said to me, this conversation is about attracting and retaining diverse clients. Right. And there's a process to get there. So I, I want to give you that process and I'll just take it straight from the book, Six Stages of Cultural Sales. The first thing is we have to contemplate correctly. Th these all begin with the letter C. Okay. You have to choose your target market because the, the number of target markets eth ethnically 
or it, as a, if you want to call it diverse markets in the world is in how it's in the millions. I mean, you can, you have to contemplate probably, you don't have the bandwidth to reach all people. It's not possible. Okay. So Giovanni, I know, I know you're, you're very familiar with the Latino world. So I'll ask you a question. Is it the same thing to reach uh, Mexicans in Oaxaca state as it is to reach Mexicans in Juarez state? I imagine that is not. It, it is not. No, I imagine, yeah. Right? Is it the same, if you take the black race, for example, is it the same to reach a person who was born and raised in, 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 in uh, Haiti as compared to a, a person who was born and raised on the south side of Chicago? Are, those are different cultures, are they not? Okay. So we cannot continue to make this a black, white, brown thing. We have to start thinking in terms of how do I more effectively and more successfully and more intelligently reach the cultures of the people we actually want to reach. Okay. And so <clears throat> the first step is to contemplate. And that is a de de developing a deep understanding of these cultures and making a decision. <laughs> Which culture do I want to attract and retain and why? Now, I go into great deal, detail in this in the book, but I, I think that the first stage is a stage of reflection, of contemplation, of stepping back, not stepping in. You know, you, you've heard the saying, fools rush in. That, that is especially true as it relates to culture. Wise people take a step back and they contemplate. They educate themselves. They learn first before moving in. So step stage one is, 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 is to contemplate. Stage two then, once I choose that market, okay, now we're specifically referring to marketing and sales, correct? Okay, once I choose that market, <clears throat> okay, so let's, let's share another difference. Is there a difference between marketing and selling to, um, I believe it was Robert, you said you lived in Naranjito, Puerto Rico, which is a mountain town, kind of towards the north side of the island, but it's in the mountains, okay? Uh, Robert, is there a difference between marketing to Puerto Ricans on the island who live in the campos, as opposed to marketing to a Puerto Rican who was born and raised in New York City? Are they different people? Are they different cultures? Absolutely. So this is not so easy and so simple. And that's why I say, step back and contemplate. Make sure you, because the more targeted your messaging, the more effective it's going to be. Or in cultural parlance, we say the more culturally relevant it is, <laughs> right? And so I always like to say to people, if it's not culturally relevant, it's not relevant. It won't resonate. Okay, so the more clear I can become on the group of people, the culture that I truly want to target, the better my marketing and my sales efforts are going to be. Okay, it's better to dominate a smaller market because we got really, really good in that market than to be so wide that we have no real impact in any market. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Choose, <laughs> okay. Uh, there's some great stories of this. There's, a, there's a, a supermarket, small Latino supermarket chain that was started in, in New York City called Bravo Supermarkets. And they were specifically for Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, Dominican family that started this supermarkets, right? And that was their market. And Puerto Ricans used to be like 70% of Latinos in New York City, but that's no longer true. We're actually under 30% now. And, but because Puerto Ricans migrated south to, to Orlando, Florida, Central Florida, primarily, the, the US-based Puerto Ricans. And so Bravo Supermarkets beat Publix, which is out of Lakeland, Florida. They beat them to the cultural punch. And there are probably 20, 30 Bravo Supermarkets sprinkled all over Central Florida that cater specifically to that market that, uh, Robert, to your point, that wants Niame, that wants Malanga, 
you know, they want batata, <laughs> you know, and they beat the main player Publix to that punch because they contemplated properly that target market and they attract and retain a very, very large client base because they got ahead of that curve a little bit. Okay. So the first step is to contemplate. The second stage is to connect. Once we choose the market, okay, we have to properly connect with it. Now, there are ways to do this. And I know we're very compressed on time, so I'm not going into detail. I just encourage people to pick up the six stages of cultural sales, okay? Because we go deep into these things. After we connect, stage three then is to create. We have to create culturally relevant products and services that people will be attracted to. Okay, so I'm looking at Robert and he, I know because of the picture behind him that he is a fan of Muhammad Ali, right? And if I were looking to uh, connect with him, we would probably move to that conversation, correct? Because that's something he loves and a person he admires, okay? We have to contemplate, we have to connect and we have to create. If I could somehow create a product or service that um, included perhaps maybe a, a framed quote from Muhammad Ali, I could probably sell that to Robert if I framed that up correctly. Am I correct, Robert? Okay. So I have to contemplate, I have to connect, I have to create uh, products and services that are culturally relevant. And then stage four is I have to campaign. I have to know within a given culture how to run my marketing and my sales campaigns. I have to know if people are uh, explicit or implicit communicators. Do they like to get things direct or do they kind of just need to hear it over time and in multiple different ways? I have to know if people are coming from high and low context cultures. Things like you know, are they more relational in nature or are they more results driven in nature? If I don't know those things about a culture, I can't speak to those things properly in my marketing and my sales. Okay. Stage five is to close. Most people in sales and marketing, they want to get to stage five and skip stages one through four. <laughs> they just want to close. Right. And that's a huge mistake because most of the time what gets closed on you in these cultural um, markets is the door. If you go in some culture, you go too quickly. You, you move, you, you know, if you're on LinkedIn, you get these requests from people who want to connect with you. And then the next email, the next message you get from them is to sell you something and everything is screaming inside of you. Why don't you just take a little time to get to know me? Right. And so you have, you have to close in ways that are culturally acceptable. For example, in the Japanese culture, you never really close, okay? They will let you know. And in, in, a lot of times in the Latino culture, the, the, you know, you have to go through this process of having dinner with the family and, and, and getting to know people and go a little slower. And then when they're ready to do business with you, they'll tell you, hey, you know, que lo que podemos hacer aquí, you know, <laughs> right? And so the, the, the concept of closing in different cultures is, is unique and different. And then stage six is to celebrate. Here's the thing about these types of relationships culturally. If we structure them correctly, we get to stage six and celebrate. Not only do we celebrate the win of the close, we actually deepen, we learn to deepen the relationship so we can create wealth in these communities. And by the way, this whole, the whole social justice movement is, it can really be, I think, improved if we get to stage six of celebrating together where we're creating wealth together, okay? And, and so there's just a way, so Joanne, that's really, really fast, right? Okay, contemplate, choose your market correctly, connect, create, campaign, close, and celebrate. Don't just move on to the next game. Stay with that community. You now have a beachhead. You now have an opportunity to deepen those relationships. And of course, we just go into great detail on all these different points. So hopefully that's helpful. We're at your time. <laughs> so. This is amazing. This is an amazing conversation. 
And, uh, oh, this is so freaking great, man. This is phenomenal. Do you, oh, I see that, that we have the link to, to get your book. Um, I have so much to say, so I'm going to be quiet so I can let other people speak, Sorel. And then I'm going to jump I in. I agree and, with you. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then I'll come back and, and, and give my, my, my uh, whatever I need to add to it. Go ahead, Sorel. Any thoughts on this? Anything over there percolating with you? Well, the only thing percolating is uh, if, if, if you don't hurry and buy a copy of the six stages of cultural sales, you're not serious about your business. So I'm posting the link to that on Facebook and I'll post it right here. So any questions, comments from anyone in the audience? I do. Go ahead, uh, Robert. Um, Ricardo, you just reinforced like a lot of things that I do, you know, for sales. I've been in, in uh, merchant services for over 12 years and my 90% of my clients is like non-brown people. So, you know, I had to understand their culture, you know, but this, you know, most of it is American culture. But when I started dabbling, dabbling into like Indian culture, Filipino culture, Cambodian culture, like getting those Thai restaurants, you know, I, I've, I grew up around that culture. So I would know about certain foods that normal Americans wouldn't know about like papaya salad and stuff like that. And that's how I got those deals. So you, what you're saying is right. You really have to understand their culture. You know, and once you understand that and they realize they see you take an interest in their culture and their way of living, they'll do business with you. Yeah, and I'll take it a little bit further, Robert. You have to know how to connect with the influences in their culture, which is under stage two of connection. If, if we can learn to connect with the proper influencers within a culture, it can really drive our business much more quickly because we're entering into a new culture. So we're at low trust point in that culture. But if we can connect and gain trust with a few influencers within that culture, that can drive our business much more quickly. So these partnerships are really, really important to be able to do this. Yeah, you, are, you, are, culture we're in. you are correct. Um, I just I signed up a Yemen uh, store and once they trust me, they introduced me to everybody in their community because he's a leader, he's a pillar in his community. Yes. Go ahead, Ronald. This is amazing conversation. <laughs> I, you know, once I turn on my screen, I say, God, I got to get a piece of that man. Because <laughs> super great. How did you get there? You know, I, I mean, being a bilingual person, how did you get there? And which market that you have culturally influenced? I mean, I know you you mentioned age, I mean, you mentioned Japanese, you mentioned uh, Indian, you know, like how to celebrate our closing with these folks. Uh, what did you, I mean, give us uh, one of your, okay. your uh, uh, I guess, win or celebration. Yeah, you, so I, that's, that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, I was raised in a bicultural home. My, you look at me, you see this white guy. My, my dad is actually Sorel's color. Uh, one of 27 kids from the mountains of Puerto Rico. I identify completely as Latino, but my mother was an orphan from the state of Kentucky. And so I, I literally, I tell people I'm a Puerto Rican hillbilly, right? But I have very little cultural affiliation with the Southern white culture, although I've had to learn to love it, to love myself, right? One of the, you know, we've had a lot of wins, uh, Ronald. We just recently just did a total transformation of a community college in North Carolina that was very segregated area, very difficult area to work in culturally. Uh, we've been able to really make great, great transformation in that. <clears throat> but from a sales standpoint, uh, National Roofing Contractors Association. This is a national association of roofing companies uh, commercial roofing company. So there's a lot of money in this industry. It's a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. And I began to be getting embedded in that industry. And so I, I kind of, if, if somebody talked about uh, recruiting, selling to, training, developing Hispanic leadership in the roofing industry, the name was Ricardo. Call Ricardo. Call, I mean, I would have people call me and they say, hey, they told me to call you. Who told you? Well, they told me, right? And so we did so much business in that industry, at the, but at the end of the day, we transformed the industry. We opened doors for Latinos to be on the national board. 
you know, that that's part of that celebration where you're going beyond just selling and marketing speeches or services or courses. Uh, we did leadership development for Latinos, uh, high potential Latinos coming up in the industry. We did, uh, we had a course called Success with Hispanics that we sold a lot of to business owners who were hiring and, and, and working with uh, Latino laborers. Um, and so if you take an industry that has a need for you and what you're doing, you can actually penetrate that entire industry. And you must understand that cultures are not just a group of, of black people or white people or cultures are, churches have cultures, associations have cultures, uh, businesses have cultures. So you have to learn the culture of that, like the roofing industry has a very specific culture, right? I had to learn that culture and then create products and services that would specifically meet the needs of that culture. And we did a lot of business in that, in that, in that group of people, a lot. And a lot of influence. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. We're doing one right now that we're just starting in with uh, staffing companies. Right. And so I'm, I'm the first speaker that they've had two months in a row for American Staffing Association. This is their national group of, you know, staffing companies around the country. And we said we, we want to bring cultural mastery to these staffing companies. Well, how do we do this? Because we know we have a culturally relevant, relevant service. Well, let's, let's go to the National Association and let's, let's embed ourselves there because they become our partners, right? And so this is where you have to connect with the right influencers to be able to get your message out. Don't do this alone. Don't ever try to come into a new culture, whether it's a country, whether it's a community, whether it's a company, whether it's an association alone. You're the outsider. You must have internal partnership. Great. Thank you. And so it very well. <laughs> I, I hope I answered your question. I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Dean, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, what I'm really hearing is uh, the importance of getting related to who it is you need to connect with so you can have some inroads in that community. And um, the thought that's right there for me is, you know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, born and raised, and I lived on the west side of Detroit. And I typically didn't go to the east side of Detroit because of stories I had heard, yeah. <laughs> unless I knew somebody on the east side of Detroit to have that relatedness. So you're, you're closer to Ann Arbor here. than you are to Windsor, right? Just... Uh, yeah, I, it <laughs> might be. It's, it's been so long since I've been there. I have to re-familiarize myself with the city when I go back. But that's the main thing I get is just how important it is to really get related and connected to somebody that can provide those inroads in that community uh, that you're attempting to reach. Yeah, I think that's really true, but it's also really true that you have to, and this is stage three, you have to create products and services that are culturally relevant to that group of people. If the group of people is worth your time, it's worth your bandwidth, right? And you can't reach all cultures. You just can't, okay? If, even if even a company like Coca-Cola, right, which is global, which has over 500 brands, and they, by the way, they have a lot of regional brands, okay? And so, like in Brazil, you have Kuat, but you can't buy Kuat in the U.S. You know, it's it's a Guaraná-based seed type of drink, right? And and so, and and in and in other countries, they have, they have a drink in Africa called Sparleta. Right. Well, you can't buy that in the U.S. So they're very regional. Coca-Cola is very regional in the way that they market their products. OK, there's even a Coca-Cola drink that's called Coca-Cola Georgia Peach. Right. That is regional to Georgia. And so you have to kind of look at this and and ask yourself this question. Am I trying to kind of fit in with a shoe? We call these things shoehorn. Right. Is that what it's called? My products and serve. So the, look at the culture as the shoe, right? This is right. new. I've never used this analogy. It just came to me right now. Look mm. at the culture as the shoe and you're trying to get your product or service into that, into that culture, but it doesn't fit. And you're having to use this kind of the shoehorn. You know what I'm talking about? We're, yeah. we're just trying to force you it those, in. Yeah. You're trying to force it in there. And that makes your marketing, your sales processes so much more difficult why not step back and actually create or tweak or readjust or change your existing products and services so that it fits so nicely? 
right? <laughs> and I think that a lot of the struggles that so many people have in selling has nothing to do with their sales processes. It has to do with their product and service not being culturally relevant. Mm. Makes a lot of sense. So always just, you, I, 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 there are multiple stages to that. And that's why I said at the very beginning to Giovanni, uh, this is a process. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This well, the process. term I, I like to use uh, quite often these days is that it's a layered conversation. Yes. So that's it, part it, of what I hear. So, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. again, at the very beginning, I have to, I have to contemplate which market I really want to go after. Because for example, when I was really focused on the roofing industry, at the same time, I did not have the bandwidth to focus on a food manufacturing industry. We could dabble in it, but it would never be a major initiative for us. You have to choose your initiatives if you're going to go deep. Mm, wow. And deep is much better than wide in business, by the way. You'll make a lot more money going deep within a culture than you will going wide with a bunch of them. Wow. And that's awesome. Thank you, Ricardo. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this man, I wish we had another half an hour, really, or another two hours. Or probably we need to take your course. This is amazing. Uh, really if you amazing take cultural people. mastery, it will change the way you do business forever. I, I love I love this. Now, I want to say two things, Sorrel. Then okay. you uh, you give us um, your, your remarks, and then we, we, we go home. So I love... I, I, three things go deep instead of wide your business will flourish right as an opportunity to think about that way if you chose the right cultural group that you want to target that's why you must contemplate it correctly contemplate correctly right yes yes thank you for the coaching <laughs> i had the other thing you said that was just like i couldn't get off it for a while i had to love my culture to love myself yes wow that's profound and the last thing I want to say is um, in, in, in reflecting everything you said, we're missing an opportunity to transform the United States, to transform America when we try to connect in terms of color rather than in terms of connecting in terms of culture. That was just, just so great stuff, Sorrel. Anyway, those are my three things I'm taking away. I want to steal Ricardo for the rest of my life. Go ahead, Sorrel. <laughs> you know, Ricardo, you always leave us thinking in a way that we've never thought before. And uh, this is what I'm leaving with. That in business, I can either be in business to sell and make a buck. Or I can be in business earning the right to serve. And to earn the right to serve, I actually have to do the work. And that work is those six steps and six stages you're talking about, like contemplating correctly. Whew. So uh, I'm stepping back and looking to earn the right to serve. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um... By the way, I put my my scheduling link in the chat. If anybody wants to schedule 15, 30 minutes with me, no charge. Happy to have a conversation, uh, anyone on this group. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's thought-provoking stuff because most of us are approaching our businesses incorrectly. Uh, and I'll, I'll close with this thought. Culture is the soil from which all things grow including your business. Become a master at connecting and creating and collaborating with people of different cultures. And not only will you become more wealthy, you will become much more influential and you'll make a much greater difference in the world. And that's, I'll leave you with that. That's the perfect place to leave us. Thank you, Ricardo. Before, before you go, uh, Ricardo, you, you said you had put your uh, scheduling info in the chat. Yes, it's not there. Yeah. Not there? You, you oh. Press in. Uh, I'm sorry. Press enter. 
Yeah, you can't leave a hanger like that. Everybody's like, where, where is it? <laughs> <Right. laughs> how, about, how about now? Where, where, where's yeah, the link? Now where's the link? How about now? now? I, put, I put my scheduling link and I put my uh, my my direct web page there as well. That, that was my not fault. the company pages. Those are my personals. You so. sent it directly to me. That was my fault because I because I sent it to you. So <laughs> no. right back. That was the Ali, Ara, and influence. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So thank you all for being here. Really, I appreciate it, Ricardo, profoundly. You took the time to be here. You're welcome to come back anytime. And uh, we'd we'll love to have you back and, and just keep exploring the six stages to culture and master and the, and the six stages to sell into a culture. I said it wrong and I apologize for that. Um, there are, Sorel and, Sorel and everybody, there are, there are five ways to live a long life, have a great skin, have an amazing body, be sexy for the rest of your life. And Sorel is going to tell us, and whatever he ends with, we're going to move to the music that comes next. Go ahead, Sorel. <laughs> Every time you say this, Giovanni, I have to laugh. <laughs> five ways, only five ways. And if you mix them up with the six stages of cultural mastery, <laughs> you will be in paradise. So love. Yeah, do love and uh, laugh, laugh like crazy, laugh at yourself, laugh at Giovanni's jokes for sure. <laughs> uh, eat, eat more plant-based, stress less and move like crazy. I love you madly. I can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. Giovanni, take